Today we're going to be talking about USART, Universal Synchronous Isynchronous Receiver Transmitter. Try to remember that and let's talk about that. UART or USART is one of the oldest ways to transmit data between two sides through a wire. It's very old, yet it's extremely simple and useful that it's still being used today. Now, computers and laptops may not have serial ports anymore, but it's so important that we have converted USB to serial. This is one of my favorite cables. It's made by FTDI and basically have their chipset inside on one side, on this, like this side here, with, the, with USB, and it gives you simple TTL level 0 to 3 or 0 to 5 volt uh, UART on this side. Now, originally, UART was RS-232, long, long time ago. RS-232 used a, to, to transmit data through longer wires, uh, they used higher voltages because the voltage drops over, over the wire, over long wires. So on one side, on the transmitter, the transmitting voltage was I think minus 25 to plus 25, and then it became minus 12 to plus 12 uh, volts. But this was their way of transmitting data over a long wire. Of course, today we don't do that. We use twisted pair, and we use, uh, like on Ethernet, we use better technologies. So that's not being used anymore. However, the way data is transmitted over UART is so simple and useful that it's perfect for transmitting data between microcontrollers. Now we use TTL level uh, voltages. We don't use minus 12 to plus 12. The, the, the way the data is uh, packed is the same as before, except the voltage is a lower voltage. And it's, the voltage is inverted. You don't need to know any of this. It's not important. All you care about is UART is extremely useful, and it's basically a transmitter and a receiver, and they have nothing to do with each other. Internally, they're two complete different things. So you can have one transmitter, and you don't have a receiver. Now, it wouldn't make sense to have that, but, uh, so you will always have transmitter and a receiver, but they are really not connected to each other. They work uh, simultaneously. You can transmit anytime, receive anytime. The transmitter on one end is connected to a receiver on the other end. So if, if you have, let's say, a serial display, why would you want to receive data from it? This will only be a receiver on the display side and then a transmitter on the microcontroller side, and you're sending uh, whatever information that's going to show on the display. A simple example. Typically, you will see a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, this is a demo right here that's using UART to transmit data wirelessly. And how does that work? Uh, on this, on this uh, example right here, I have a um, click module that have transmitter and a receiver on UART with carrier frequencies. And at different Tech Talks, we talked about carrier frequencies and how that works. Just a quick overview right here. So this is what you're trying to transmit. You would add a carrier frequency, and this is what the data looks at the end when you transmit the data. Now the receiver filters out the carrier frequency, and you will end up with what you have transmitted. Now, this is just the way the data is carried through. Now, what the bits mean that is defined by whichever you are using, it could be something that you have defined, but in this example, I'm just using UART. That's already defined and it's already built into the microcontroller. How did I get that to work? Uh, UART, it's basically transmitting bytes, and a byte is eight bits, but then there's a start bit and a, uh, a stop or end bit, and these two bits with the eight bits become 10, so you're transmitting with every byte, you're transmitting 10 bits. And, and uh, UART always start in a high, not in a low, so that when there's nothing is being transmitted, the transmit line is high. And then it goes low, and this is the start. And then from this point on, it starts transmitting the data, whatever data you need to transmit. And there's a stop bit at the end. And then it goes back idle. So how does the receiver know how to time the data that's transmitted by the transmitter? This is where synchronous versus asynchronous come in handy. 
Synchronous, which is not very common, is where there is a clock signal that goes between the transmitter and receiver saying, okay, here's the data that's being clocked at, and so there, it's asynchronous. Asynchronous, meaning there's no clock in between the transmitter and receiver. It's just one, the one signal. Of course, there is a common ground between the two. Everything, electronics, there's always a common ground. So when the data is being transmitted, the transmitter and the receiver both agree on timing, and that's the baud rate. So if you ever open uh, like terminal software and you want to set your uh, serial port settings, you would set uh, okay, one of the common, extremely common old baud rate is 9600. This was really fast, like at some point, believe it or not. So the, it's, this is saying you're transmitting 9600 bits per second. So each one of these pieces will be uh, um, not bits actually, as in bytes, as the individual 10 bits. So if you divide this by 10, you would have 960 bytes uh, per second. By today's standard, this is extremely slow. Uh, another one that gotten more uh, popular over time is 115200. Uh, uh, this is a lot more common one uh, today. Uh, there are higher ones, but they're not really common. So if you're not sure which baud rate a thing you're connected to runs at, try 115200. If that doesn't work, try 9600. Those, in my experience, these has been the most common uh, baud rates on uh, most of the things I've worked with. Uh, so transmitter receiver agree on specific timing. This is how fast I'm going to send the individual bits. And then the receiver on a falling edge will start its timing and it will know that after that much time there's going to be another bit and it's going to check that it's a one or it's a uh, zero. And this is it really for you art. Now you don't need to worry about timing or any of that because you, send you connect transmitter to receiver and receiver to transmitter, the two ends. And then everything is built in hardware into the microcontroller. So you would just set the baud rate and you would send data. And if you're talking to the system from a high level, like from a tiny CLR or Windows or Linux, you really don't know it. You don't need to know any of this detail. You just say open serial port and here is a bunch of data, send that data on the wire and the hardware take care of the rest. Now, how I made this work here is, is a little bit more tricky. And uh, I would like to cover this as well, because this will give you an idea of, of some tricks you can do. Uh, to transmit the data using infrared, I'm going to need a carrier frequency. I need a carrier frequency, and I need this actual signal I want to transmit, and then I, that's what I need to transmit on the actual uh, transmit. And you can, you can go check the other uh, tech talk we did on infrared so you can understand this better. But how can I generate this? Well, an easy way would be to use PWM to generate 38 kilohertz use an AND gate, and then I would have UART, so there's UART, and there is uh, 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 the carrier frequency, and they both together get combined, and they generate that signal. Now, there's no AND gate on the circuit, there's no AND gate on the click module, so how can I do this? Well, here is the trick. Uh, we can generate, there is a signal generator uh, library that's built into TinyCLR, and you can use this to generate uh, signals in software, and it has carrier frequency built in as an option. So what I did over here is very simply uh, generate what bits I need in software to build up this like byte array that says high at this time, low at this time. So I just generate this in software, and then when I generate it on the pin in software, I would say there is like an argument true or false for carrier frequency, I would set that to true, and there is a carrier frequency that is being transmitted. So even though I'm using UART for the receiving end, I'm actually not transmitting using UART here. I am simulating UART in software, which you can do if you don't have enough UART, and then on the receiving end, I'm using an actual UART hardware. I could have as well used interrupt and use some kind of mechanism to receive UART in software, but why worry about all that? There's already UART built in uh, that handles everything. For me, whenever a byte is received, 
I get an interrupt that is a byte is received. So transmitting data by simulating UART, receiving using an actual UART. UART is that simple. It's a beautiful standard, and if you haven't used it in the past, sure enough, you're gonna use it in the future. And that's it for this week. We'll see you.